Southwestern Saskatchewan is, is home to the greatest concentration of species at risk and some of the largest blocks of native grasslands in Canada. This area also maintains a strong ranching culture. These are some of the folks that own and manage that grass and habitat. The job is uh, first and foremost to ensure that our cattle are uh, healthy. We have to ensure that the land they're grazing is healthy. If we do that, it makes our lifestyle uh, very enjoyable and uh, gives you a purpose in life. It's about the land. It's about being in tune with land and being in tune with nature. Nature's going to take the first cut. And if you live with nature, you can do it. You know, one guy one time said to us, he said, well, do you think the, like, do we choose the land or does sometimes the land choose you? We ranch on summer ranges on Pinto Butte, which is where we are now, located between Belmarie, Pontax and Mancota. Father bought the outfit in 1951. I'm the second generation on the place. The whole operation is 7,300 acres and we're running uh, right around 160, 1,250 pound cows. Well, as a rancher, I look out across uh, and I see food for my livestock. And yet, if I'm thinking of species at risk, I have to understand that this is also a home for the species to survive in. There's three species identified are the Sprague's Pippet and the Swift Fox that are listed and uh, the Long-Billed Curlew. Don't think very many people willingly would uh, harm species. I, uh, I see species at risk on my property as being proof that I am doing something right and that uh, the landscape as a whole is in balance. Cattle are uh, a very important part of the ecosystem. They've maybe replaced the grazers that were here before, but they still uh, do a good job of clipping grass down and moving around pastures to uh, create a diversity. Species uh, each uh, have different preferences, so as a cow grazes one spot and ignores another one, that allows various species to take advantage of it. The graze spots are warming up quicker in the spring to allow forbs to uh, grow and the flowering plants will attract the insects that a lot of the birds will eat, so it's all intertwined. This place is managed by myself, my wife Sandy, my daughter and son-in-law. We maintain a herd of here of about 450 cows and about another 150 heifers, and we grass most of the, the yearlings. There'd probably be eight in total that we're fully aware of, and uh, they would be the sage grouse, the burying owls, swift fox, loggerhead shrikes, sprague's pippet. I guess that didn't make eight, but close enough. <laughs> it's, it, it, I, I've done more research, I've done more of my homework, I've, 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 I've tried to identify those species, I've tried to figure out what, what, it does, what they can do or what I may be doing wrong. Uh, so I, I, if, I, if I was going to value my time, I would say if anything at this point it would be more in the research and just understanding what them species might need or might not need. Or, so yeah. But as far as managing the land different, the way we manage our land, they, we coexist with those and we have a rule in the family that it's non-disturbance. If they're there, we leave them alone. Uh, you know, we're not, my family, or I, I can't speak for every family, but we've been here, we, we've proven we've been here for 110 years and it's our intention that somebody in the family will be here maybe another 10 years, 110 years. So I think just, uh, just maintaining the status quo. My name is Randy Stocky and I, my family lives here on the ranch uh, we call Willow Creek Ranch. We've been here for probably 73 years now. My father started here in 1943. My sons are involved in the ranch. 
they'd be the third generation. They um, did this inventory. They actually come up with 50 species of birds on the ranch. We have nine that are a species at risk. So it was proof to me that what we've been doing for 70 some years here is uh, providing the habitat for these species at risk. We're looking at this for a hundred years, eh? Like we're hoping our family can stay here and live like we have and create healthy source of food for people for a long time. And so we know in this area we, we can't rape the land because it's, it's a one year thing then. If you destroy your grass, then next year you have nothing. So to maintain this operation for long term, we have to look after the grass. We have to make sure we have a reserve for the bad years so it can be sustainable for a long time. Basically, it's just a traditional knowledge thing, I guess, a generational thing. People that have been here for generations uh, know some of the circumstances that happen and help we help each other out eh, to learn. You teach the new guy in the block how to live here. So. <laughs> if I was going to convey one thing to them, is you know, now that we're getting so far away from Grandpa having a ranch and so many generations removed from the farm, is, you know what? Uh, probably the best thing you could ever do as a consumer is go and visit a ranch. Go find somebody that you can talk to. Go, 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 go and question that farmer. Go and you'll see what his daily activities are. We're, we're here for the long run. What landowners are doing is, uh, is from a long time knowledge of what's there. It's pretty hard for somebody outside of this industry to try to manage it because they, they don't have all the ins and outs of what's actually happening on this land. Um, they don't have an understanding of what, uh, how species interact with each other. The public really needs to think about what they're being told. The fact that ranchers are unique and uh, each ranch operation is, has different resources that it draws upon just in itself makes a, each rancher unique and each operation totally unique and some people don't understand that they can't generalize the whole industry because there are too many variables in each operation that actually allows each individual to be an individual. Generally speaking, species at risk depend on these large expanses of native grasslands. They also need specific habitat attributes such as robust sagebrush, uh, native grasses, plant litter, and forbs for food and cover. We, we count on ranchers to manage their prairie to create a mosaic of habitats, essentially providing homes for, for wildlife. You know, for example, you know, by paying attention to how heavily they stock their ranges or by moving cattle or, or hazing cattle on large fields, uh, they are coexisting with, with species at risk. We're proud of the work that they're doing and, and we recognize that we need to support them in their endeavors. Okay, my name is Randy Stockey. Um, with my family, we've managed this ranch in southwest Saskatchewan for over 73 years now. Through a lifetime of observation and the knowledge of those who've come before us, we've developed a love for this land. We've realized the importance of preserving native grasslands as it provides a home for us and species at risk. My name is Randy Stockey and I'm proud to be a rancher. I'm Orrin Bayless from Pontac, Saskatchewan. I'm a second generation rancher. Every day I work to make sure my daughters and grandchildren will have the opportunity to appreciate the prairie like I have. We're the Zetners. We run a sustainable fourth generation beef operation that coexists with multiple species at risk. We're proud to raise quality beef on short grass prairie.